Now, I've known a lot of secret, well, actually, that's not true. I haven't known any secret givers because they're secret. But I have known a lot of vocal givers, and I suspect a many secret givers. And I want you to know as lead pastor, I love all givers. We are trying to keep our church running and however God is calling you to do, God bless you. But one of my favorite examples of a vocal giver happened in a church that I served many years ago. It was the First Presbyterian Church of Ann Arbor, Michigan. And I was a pastor there and many years before, there was a very vocal giver in that congregation named Robert McNamara, who you may remember was the Secretary of Defense during the Kennedy administration. Now, Robert McNamara had a lot of good qualities, but he tended to use his gifts in some ways as cudgels and power mechanisms for those around him so that they knew who was in charge. The story goes that McNamara was at the session meeting one night and it was going on and on and on and on. And if you are an elder or, or ever have been one, feel free to push the heart button there on your screen. You know what I'm talking about. The discussion on this particular evening was whether the church should pay for the repair of the sidewalk outside. <clears throat> the missions department said, no, the money should go to mission. Next Gen said, no, the money should go to Next Gen. The, the worship committee said, no, we need a new set of speakers. The endowment committee said, we need to put it away in the bank. And the B&G, the Building and Grounds Committee, said, folks, if we don't pave this sidewalk, we're going to be sued as a congregation. Went on till about 10 o'clock, and so the story goes, Robert McNamara stood up in the middle of the meeting and said, how much will that sidewalk cost? They said, $10,000. He pulled out his checkbook and wrote a check for $10,000. He slapped it down on the table. He said, here's $10,000, and I quit. And he stormed out of the room. The sidewalk got fixed. But what happened after that vocal gift is that the congregation became divided. People took sides. There was a long process of angry comments and letters and emails. And but you know what I've always wondered? What if Robert McNamara had gone home from that session meeting that night and his wife had said, honey, it's 10 o'clock. That was a long meeting. And he said, oh, you don't know the half of it. We debated a sidewalk for three hours. What if his wife had said, you know, Bob, why don't you and I pay for that sidewalk ourselves secretly as an anonymous gift? And don't tell anyone in the church such that all the members of the church will wonder if it wasn't the other person doing that, and we might bring this congregation together. How different that moment might have been. So secret gifts have the capacity to bring people together. In our country that is so divided right now, what I wonder is if we don't need more secret gifts than at any time in our country's history. Many of you may remember a campaign in which President George H.W. Bush talked about a thousand points of light, in which he asked fellow Americans like you and I to give publicly to our country. That was a great speech. But you know what I feel our country needs now more than ever? Not a thousand points of light. We need a million secret givers. A million secret givers who give secretly to others, give secretly to people they don't agree with, give secretly to causes they believe in, who give secretly in order to bring our country together. But finally, and this is my most important point, I deeply believe that when we give secret gifts, miracles happen. Miracles can happen. Today is the last day of the Masters Tournament in Augusta, Georgia, which is why I partly believe that many of you may not be watching now, but we'll watch this later. <clears throat> That's just fine. But if you watched the Masters Tournament in the first round, you saw one of the most incredible golf shots in the history of the game. It happened on the 16th hole when golfer named John Rahm hit a hole-in-one 
Let's take a look at that so I can show you exactly how incredible this is. And I'm going to pretend I'm a commentator skipping over the lake five times and up onto the green. And yes, it's, it's turning, it's drawing. Yes, I do believe John Rahm is about to hit a hole in one. Yes, it's on track. <clears throat> do say what? Hip, hip. It's heading into the hole. It's curving. It's curving. It's curving. It's coming down to the hole. Hole in one. <clears throat> An amazing shot. Now watch the screen. How many people are there watching John Rahm's shot? There's his caddy. <clears throat> There's the other caddy. And here is Fowler giving him a heads up and a hands up and a high five. But other than that, because of COVID, it was a secret act. Except that a gazillion people were watching on TV, but it happened at a secret space. Miracles happen in secret spaces with God. And as I close today, I just want you to hear this. Yes, miracles do happen. Miracles do happen. And I want you to know that if you need a miracle right now, God still provides miracles. And God can do this. And sometimes God does that best through our secret gifts. Thank you, God, for your love of us. Thank you for letting us participate in this thing called creation. Thank you for giving us this powerful, powerful tool for change, for bringing people together, and that is to give secretly. In Jesus' holy name we pray, amen.